Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I will try to answer a few questions I have been asked about track or how track stays on track. Let me preface here that I will mostly be going over North American types of track and equipment, although other types come up along the way. Early on in this series, I talked about different kinds of guideways, wagonways, plateways, and then of track and flange wheels. What I want to go into now is more about how the track works for flanged wheels and how these rails are kept where they are supposed to be. Okay, let's get to the basics. So trains ride on rails. Let's look at how rail is kept where it is wanted. One of the most basic methods to hold rail in place is the spike, like this one. So a spike like this, uh, Kuma, I already have a spike. Ah, I see. Thank you, Kuma. And yes, I will tell them. Spikes like this have been used to hold the rails in place from almost the beginning, and they are still widely used today. This spike is a modern one that is used on many of today's railways across much of North America. While this spike is from the mid-19th century, we think that this spike is from the original Transcontinental Railroad. Spikes have not changed all that much over the past 200 years, other than getting a bit bigger. While many of the earliest tracks were built mostly of wood, today's rails, for the most part, are made of steel. These rails are laid on ties, also known as sleepers in some places. These ties are commonly made of wood, although concrete and even steel are sometimes used. Some of the newest ties are made of composite materials. The most simple way rails can be held on the ties is to have them spiked directly to the tie. This was very common in the early years of railroading. Later, tie plates were added to spread out the weight and make the ties last longer. Even now, in the early 21st century, a great deal of track in North America is held in place using the simple tie plate and spike system. These spikes are simply driven into the wood, most often with a big hammer, something like a sledgehammer. This kind of hammer is called a spike maul. Of course, it does help if you're good at swinging one. Today, power equipment is more often used to drive spikes, although the spike mall is still part of every maintenance worker's equipment. As I said, early on, the rails were placed directly on wood ties. Uh, while I have already gone over this, in North America, the tie plate was added to help spread the weight out over more area. Another way to spread the weight out is a system using something called a chair. This did the same job as the tie plate. The chair not only holds the rail, but also helps maintain the rail's alignment. Another way to hold down rails is this. This is a type of screw. And yes, you would need to screw it in. On the most heavily used lines, this screw-type fastener is often used. Generally, this type of screw is used on certain kinds of tie plate or chair that holds the rail. This type of fastener is a sprung type. One manufacturer of spring clips is Pandrol, and their fasteners are typically called Pandrol clips. Besides holding the rail, it has the additional advantage of being sprung. The sprung part takes up some of the flex and movement of the rails as trains pass over the track. 
one other part of track is joining one rail to another rail. One of the common ways rails are joined to other rails is with a fish plate. No, no, Kuma, not that kind of fish and not that kind of plate. Come on, come on. A fish plate is sometimes called a splice bar or joint bar. The name fish plate comes from a term from wooden shipbuilding referring to a wooden reinforcement of a built-up ship's mast that helped round out its desired profile. Okay, let's put some of this together. This is a grade crossing. Near the crossing, the rails are held down with pandrel clips. It is worth the heavy-duty construction to keep from having to tear up a road crossing for rail work. On the most heavily used lines, you might find concrete ties with special hold-down clips. Tracks like these are often used on lines that have the heaviest of loads and the most frequent services. For those heavily used lines, the best way to join rails together is to weld the rails together. Often these rails are pre-made in long strings then transported on special trains that carry these extremely long rails. It is little or no surprise that this kind of rail is called continuously welded rail. An interesting side note about the pandrel clip and continuously welded rail is that while they are used on the most heavily utilized main lines, they are often used on many so-called light rail lines. While these systems are often called light rail, the rails themselves are for the most part not that light. You might ask, why is it that a system that is called light rail would then use very heavy rail? One simple reason is to avoid maintenance and disruption. The light rail and tram passenger lines are used more often than many other lines. Light rail trains might have a frequency of, say, every 15 minutes, and sometimes even more often. This means a lot of wear on the track. Heavy-duty rails and holders, often using concrete sleepers, means a lot less maintenance. Less maintenance is a simple way to keep operating costs lower. This reasoning is also applied on many mainline railways. In places where maintenance might be troublesome, heavy-duty rail hold-downs are used. Besides keeping the track tacked down, there are devices that make doubly sure that the gauge of the track stays at the correct distance. This is called an anti-spreader. It does just that. It keeps the rails from spreading apart. As I said before, one method of linking rails together is by connecting them with nuts, bolts, and fish plates. Today, as welded rail is more commonly used, maintenance crews carry equipment to re-weld rails when necessary, such as when splicing in a new rail or repairing a broken rail. So whether it, the track is held down by spikes or clips, the important part is that it is held in place. And as always, we'll see you on the train, however the rails on which it rides are held in place.